Hi everybody, welcome to another Facebook Live, not Facebook, YouTube, YouTube Live. <laughs> My name is Tim, and uh, I'm here with... Sam, we're with Alien Gear Holsters, and we're coming at you today to talk about Sig Sauer. Really popular gun brand, and uh, as a lot of people have probably noticed, you know, some are really good for uh, use of service pistols, duty pistols, that sort of thing. You know, great as a home defense gun, truck gun, that, that kind of thing. Others are a little bit better for concealed carry. So, those of you wondering what Sig Sauer pistols are going to be really good for concealed carry, that's what we're going to go over today. Now, what, they're, what Sig is most famous for is this gun right here, the Sig P226. It's, uh, this really made their legacy. It's a not necessarily the best for concealed carry, although there are people out there that do. You know, just like with a lot of other you know classic service pistols like the uh, you know Beretta 92 slash M9, you know, CZ 75, 1911 government frame. There are people who conceal and carry this on a daily basis, but it's maybe not the best choice. You know, due to uh, you know some obvious factors. First, it's a bit on the big side, four and a half inch barrel. It's uh, almost six inches tall. It's about an inch and a half wide at the grips. So it's big. It's a little fat. It's also heavy. It's, uh, I believe, almost 32 ounces unloaded. <clears throat> that said, it's, all, it's a wonderful pistol. The action is absolutely you know, iron tough. This thing will outlive you if you buy one of these. Uh, just, to show, just to be safe, we're going to show you that it is oh, stiff slide. Show you that it is unloaded. Empty magazine, as are the rest of these, but we're still going to clear every time just to you know be safe and all that. If you wanted to carry that one concealed, where would you carry it at on you? Well, uh, there are a few different ways. If you were going to carry a Sig P226, there are a couple different ways that I'd, that I would do it. I, it's going to work differently for everybody. What works for me won't necessarily work for you. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, a few different ways I'm, I would do that. A good IWB holster. You know, you can conceal it that way if you got uh, if you're wearing some roomy clothing and it doesn't doesn't print too badly. Uh, it could work in a shoulder holster so long as it's uh, vertically oriented, so the gun's sticking straight up and down. If it's horizontally oriented, which some shoulder holsters are, it's probably going to print. Print through the carry, you know, print through the layer that you're wearing over it, uh, unless you're wearing a big poofy suit or something like that. Those would be the ways that I'd try to carry that. You might be able to get away with a high riding OWB holster if it rides nice, uh, you know, nice high and tight and so forth to the body. You might be able to get get away with it that way. I, some people might, some people might not. You'll probably have to wear some sort of jacket over it or something like that to carry it that way, you know, and conceal. But you could do it. It's just that it's maybe not necessarily the best choice why for concealed would, uh, carry gun. Why would someone choose this gun over a different SIG? That gun over a different SIG? Well, because it's a tank. You kidding me? But that thing has the typical SIG P226 will have a service life in the hundreds of thousands of rounds. Uh, you could buy that as a relatively young person and shoot it into your old age, and probably leave it to your grandkids. Like that's how long those things can last. I mean, you know, for the for the typical person, all you'll have to do is change a few springs here and there. That's it. Uh, they are iron tough. They're accurate. They're reliable. That's the reason why so many different police departments uh, issue these. That's also the reason why a lot of military, uh, a lot of military units, a good number of units of our military, as well as a number of other militaries worldwide, issue their troops the Sig P226. It it is it is a tank. It is reliable as all get out. It shoots well. There's just really no faulting it. The only complaint you could, the only complaint you can honestly make about it, is that, well, it's a tank. It's a brick. It's difficult to carry compared to a lot of other guns. But that said, you'll never go wrong with one. I see something a little different on this gun. There's a a little lever that's right here. That's right. What does that do? That's not standard. That is a decocking lever. So, the P226 is double action, all right? So, you can carry it with the hammer down, and then you have a long, hard trigger pull for the first shot, and the virtue of the cycling of the slide, oof, 
slide release. Every shot after that will be in single action because it is a double single action semi-automatic pistol. Now, this lever here is a decocking lever. When the pistol is cocked, if you thumb that down, drops the hammer to a, uh, that's about a quarter cock position. And so that way you still have the long double action first shot. Th this, is a, uh, this is a take on the double action operating system. Now, it's a bit different depending on who you get your big double action auto from. For SIG, they have the decocking lever that drops the hammer down, but it still keeps the gun fireable. So you can decock it, so you have the uh, longer trigger pull acting, longer harder trigger pull acting as a safety device when you carry it in the holster. But should you need to get it out and use it, you can get the gun into the fight right away. Other variations are out there, like uh, you know, Beretta has a decocking safety. You know, you'll you'll notice that it's uh, located on the slide of uh, Beretta pistols. Thumb it down, it decocks the pistol, but it also places it on safe. So you can carry it either with the safety on and decocked, or you can flip it back up after decocking the gun. You know, on a Beretta 92 or Storm or old Beretta Cougar, if you manage to get your uh, hands on one. Uh, Stoger also makes a, a copy of it. Beretta actually just sent them the machines. Uh, long story there, don't worry about it, but uh, with Beretta safeties, you thumb it down, it places the safety on and decocks the pistol to carry in double action, you have to flip the safety back up. CZs, on the other hand, well the old CZ75, in order to carry in double action mode, you actually have to lower the hammer yourself over a live round, which, hey, it's not impossible, but a lot of people don't like to do that. Six Hour has one of the most logical double action systems with the decock with the decocking lever, so it's uh, ideal for a uh, for a gun that you're actually going to carry. And that's the uh, that is the difference between Sig and other big double action guns. That's what that's part of what's made them very popular, is that very very logical operating system. So we've got um, two of our shape shift holsters are. Go to these firearms right here. We got the P two uh, nine thirty eight and the two thirty eight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, why don't you talk about these guns here? All right. Now these happen to be uh, two very very popular concealed carry guns. Uh, certain discerning high quality holster companies sell a lot of units in these. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, they're both micro nineteen eleven designs. So they're single action. They have, a, uh, they have a manual safety right here, so you can carry cocked and locked with the hammer back, or if you wish to, uh, again, it's uh, you know, one of those things, it's, if you're going to carry one of these guns, this is going to be up to you. You can either flip the safety on to carry it, and so if you actually need to use it, you have to manually deactivate the safety, or you can manually lower the hammer over live round. Now, just want to show you that these aren't these aren't loaded, but a lot of people really don't like really don't like doing that. Uh, I don't particularly like it with my carry guns, so it is it is not something I prefer to do myself. I either like have a, just speaking for me personally, I like to have either a manual safety I can engage or a double action system where I don't have to worry about it. So P two thirty eight and nine thirty eight are well, Sig took the idea from Colt, who came out with a uh, micro 1911 pistol, kind of like this one, about uh, 10, 15 years ago. It's called the Mustang. They still actually make it today, but a few other companies have started making their take on it. This happens to be Sig's. Uh, Kimber also does it. They call it the Micro and the Micro 9. And uh, Springfield just came out with one called the Springfield 911. Uh, these are, you know, like I said, these are Sig's versions. The 238 is in 380 ACP, uh, carries six rounds or seven if you get the extended magazine, which uh, I believe this one is. They're really nice and light, you know, just about a pound. They are very thin, you know, less than an inch wide. They're very compact, very easy to carry, and I've, having actually shot this one, uh, having actually shot these, uh, not this specific one, but I have fired a uh, P238 or two. It's actually one of the easier 380s to shoot, or at least the micro 380s. 
And not all of them are exactly pleasant, but these are really not bad at all. The 938, on the other hand, is just a slightly bigger version. But it's slightly bigger because this one is in 9mm rather than 380. So to accommodate the slightly bigger cartridge, frame's a little bit wider, it's a little bit taller, barrel's a little bit longer, like 0.1 inch. That's how, that's how little difference it is. It is a couple ounces heavier, but other than that, it's much the same story. It's very compact, it's pretty light, easy to carry, easy to conceal. I haven't fired one of these myself, uh, but they are, I've talked to a number of people who have, you know, a lot of people own these. There's a lot of reviews out there for such a small gun. It actually shoots, it's supposed to shoot 9mm pretty well. I don't know if you have or not. Yeah, I actually bought one of those last year. I got the Equinox version. Oh. And, um, and I really liked it. You know, it's kind of small. I was thinking it would, you know, maybe it wouldn't be as comfortable as I wanted it to be. But I really enjoy it. Yeah. It, it feels like it's not even there when you conceal it because it's so small because of how short the handle is, because it's single stack, just carrying a small gun like this, you might think, well, it doesn't, it won't be comfortable for me, but you know, when you get out there and shoot something like this, you might be surprised at, at how well you can shoot an accurate, uh, well-made gun, and then also have such a concealable firearm. These are just really comfortable to wear because it's like there's almost nothing there compared to, say, this gun again, it's just, very very small so yeah and that's one of the that's the those are the reasons that the p238 and p938 have gotten so popular they are very easy to carry very easy to conceal and actually pretty good to shoot for being such a small gun and, you know uh guns have come a long way in the past couple of decades uh some modern shooters now don't know how have don't know how good they uh don't know how good they got it but uh be that as maybe. Some other popular carry guns from SIG. This one, possibly their most popular, yeah. 320. This is way up there. So this is the subcompact frame of the SIG P320 system. Now these are actually modular. You can swap out, uh, you can actually take out the trigger group and swap it in between frames. And oh, you will also need, uh, you do need slides to go with it, but it's uh, a very modular pistol design. Now, this one happens to be the subcompact. Uh, this one is very popular. So are the P320 compact and, three P and P320 carry versions, which are uh, very, very similar. Uh, the, only, the only difference is the carry model has a slightly longer grip and holds a couple extra rounds of 9mm. That's the only difference between those two. But uh, the P320 subcompact, compact, and carry are very, very popular concealed carry pistols for SIG. Now, this is a bit scaled up from the uh, P938 and 238 that we showed you. Still, obviously, much smaller than the P226. Now, a big difference between uh, this gun and older SIG guns, this uses a striker-fired system. So, uh, instead of a hammer or internal hammer, it's a striker-fired system, much like Glock or Smith & Wesson MP, stuff like that. Modern shooters happen to really, really take after that. Gun manufacturers like that, that a lot of modern shooters like that, and the reason why is because they're cheaper to make. But <clears throat> be that as maybe, the P320 Compact uh, has polymer frame. It's a little bit lighter than your typical SIG gun. I uh, believe this one is well under two pounds, about two and a half. Also, I just want to show you a clear, empty magazine. It holds. 12 plus 1 of 9mm, though you can get extended magazines if you so desire. Uh, for me, my pinky comes off, but, uh, you know, that's really not, my pinky does come off, but that's not a big deal. You know, you might, you might find you shoot just fine without your, uh, without a full grip. It's not too wide, it's not too terribly tall, and it's not too terribly long. Barrel length is, uh, about three and a half inches. So, this would actually be a great choice for a concealed carry gun. It's got good capacity. It's going to conceal and carry pretty well. Uh, it's got a bit of heft. Uh, one thing about SIGs is their slides are quite heavy. And if you ever handle this gun, you can feel the difference. Like it wants to nosedive. So the slide is, uh, the slides are, they are built tough. It, that's the reason why, they, that's one of the reasons they last so long. 
great choice for concealed carry gun. Uh, thing you uh, should know, the P320 is actually a continuation or an evolution of the P250, which had virtually everything the same except for the trigger. The trigger, on, or except, uh, sorry, not the trigger, the firing system. Firing system on, three th on the P320 series, like I said, striker fire. The P250, on the other hand, is actually hammer fired, and it's a light double action only pistol. So, as you can see, clear, empty magazine. So, if you were to take a P3, P250. Now this is a P250 compact. So to show you the show you the difference in size, this is the subcompact, and they did make the P250 in subcompact guys. It's virtually the same frame, same slide, virtually the same everything. Okay. So this would be roughly, you know, this thing is almost exactly like the P320 compact. So if you're wondering what the P320 compact is like, it's just like this. It's just the firing system is a little different. So if you actually, when you actuate this thing, uh, you actually see the, you can actually see the hammer poking out at the back there. You should see it po uh, start to poke out. So it's got a longer trigger pull, a little bit, and not really too much harder. It it'll breaks it about six pounds, but it is a little bit long, which some people don't like. Whatever, you might find you do like these. Carrying capacity, since the grip is longer, the magazine's larger. This one, I believe, is uh, 15 plus one. 13? Oh no, this one's actually 13. My mistake. It would be 15 if uh, it would be 15 and 9 millimeter. This one happens to be in 40. Now, oh, another uh, top tip. Think about the P320 series. You have a lot more choice in caliber, so you can get it in 9, and that is most popular. But it's also available in 40, 357 Sig, and there are a few P320s that are actually in 45 ACP. They may have more later, such as 10 millimeter or something, but right now that's what it is 9 40 357 sig and 45 this is a bit bigger you know barrel is a little bit longer just under four inches it is a little bit heavier by a few ounces but it's uh, you know this is still well within the realm of easily carried and concealed the p320 or sorry p250 compact here and the p320 compact which is almost just like it is Roughly comparable to a Glock 19. It's about the same size. It is a little bit heavier, but you know, not so much that it makes a huge difference. That makes it a very eminently carryable gun. I mean, a lot, a lot of people out there conceal and carry a Glock 19 every day, and a lot of people conceal and carry these right here too. So we got one more here. Uh, this one looks like it might be newer. It's, that is newer. It's got a cooler look. Um, why would someone choose a P365? Uh, the P365. Now, uh, SIG unveiled these at SHOT Show this year. The uh, P365, well, like a lot of SIG's newer products, striker, it's uh, striker-fired, polymer frame. But the P365 is a dedicated concealed carry pistol. The cool thing about it, it is very small. Right, so barrel length about three inches. It's just right around an inch wide, only about mm, four and some inches tall. It's nice and light, you know, maybe 22, 23 ounces. I don't have a scale here. But it does offer double stack and generous capacity for dimensions. It holds this one, you know, it's marked 10, but I believe it holds up to 12 plus one in some magazines. But anyhow. 10 plus 1 of 9 millimeter, and the thing is, it is barely any bigger than a lot of single stack subcompacts that are in the same class. This thing is barely any bigger at all than the Smith & Wesson Shield. In fact, I think it's a little smaller. Yeah, you know, when you said that, I was surprised. And I, it doesn't look like it's a double stack. No, it, it does not at all. In fact, it's about the same... Uh, it's about the same size as, uh, you know, I mentioned the Shield, the Walter PPS, uh, Glock 43. It's about the same size as a lot of those guns. But the thing is, it holds, uh, this magazine says 10. Last time I looked at specs, it mentioned 12. But it holds, you know, more rounds, which 
you know, a, a lot of people want to have more than, you know, six, seven, or eight of nine millimeter or 40, you know, whatever it is that they carry. That's actually making the P365 a very, very popular gun these days. Uh, SIG may have another sales sensation on their hands. And uh, early reviews indicate, I haven't shot one yet, but early reviews indicate it's uh, another great example of SIG's striker-fired operating system. Yeah, you know, uh, early models are going to have their hiccups, but early models of all guns have a few peccadilloes. Early models of anything, you know, do that. I mean, some of you out there probably uh, have a friend who, uh, you know, new, you know, like a new smartphone comes out, and they say, you know, I'm not buying it right away. That's how they work out the bugs. You know, I mean. Okay, so if uh, if you were thinking about getting a Sig, yeah, why would you choose a Sig to begin with? So you can look better than other people. Just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> All right, uh, older SIGs have a, a premium attached to them. So uh, another thing you should bear in mind, if I could see the uh, P226, your older big metal double action SIGs, such as this P226 here, they're quality, no doubt about it. You'll pay for it. These MSR, you know, MSRP is about a thousand dollars. You can expect to pick up, you know, pick them up new for, uh, you know, somewhere between eight and nine hundred in most gun stores. Sometimes a little bit less, and you can usually get a used, decent used example for, you know, six to seven hundred without issue. However, they're modern polymer framed striker fired guns, such as the P3, P320 subcompact here. Those go for more in the five to six hundred dollar range so these are much more easily acquired uh, in terms of uh, in terms of expense so you know I joke about looking better than other people uh, you know because you know oh, I have a more expensive gun ha, 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 ha. but because uh, some people are like that and that's okay you know you bought the premium model more power to you but that said why would somebody want to say for serious they are reliable as all get out. I mean, the, these guns are tanks. They will, they will digest any ammunition you can feed them. They will shoot hundreds of thousands of rounds. That's how long their service lives are. You can expect to pass one down to your grandkids. All you'll have to do is, what, maybe change a few springs? Yeah. That's it. You definitely notice it when you feel these things. They are, they are tanks. Um, you know, another thing I've noticed, too, for especially for SIG, is that when you go to buy one of these firearms, there are a lot of choices. Yeah. Most of these guns that you see here are, are the standard black guns that we have at Alien Gear to take pictures with. But um, you know, when you buy, say, a P238, there are over eight to like twelve different versions of these guns, so you can get yeah. it customized to look exactly how you like it. And they're not just like different colors, but they've got cool grips and all sorts of features that, you know, customize the gun to something that you would, you know, be proud to carry. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. You know, you can, uh, that is another beautiful, uh, another wonderful thing about, uh, about six hours is the amount of customizability. You know, you have a ton of factory options for every single one of these, you know, uh, different colors. I, the, uh, P250 and P320 series here, I mean, this is, like you mentioned, this is the base, basic black, I think they call it Nitron. This is the, uh, that's the basic black. You can get them in flat dark earth, you know, if you're, you know, uh, if you're into that. They have upgradable sights. You know, the factory sights are usually white three dot like they are for everyone else, but you can also opt for SIG night light sights. You, they have premium editions of virtually every single one of these guns. You know, uh, I think there's something like 20 different iterations of the P226 down there. Uh, you know, there's also a lot of aftermarket support for all those parts, you know, grips and, you know, grips and target sights and night sights, you know, all sorts of things. So you can actually do a lot of customizing with these. Yeah, they just, they just kind of plain look BA, you know. These things, I mean, they're not a box. They look like a cool gun. So, I mean, yeah. no, they are. They, they have a good, ergo, they have a, you know, they have pretty good ergonomic feel and they, they feel pretty good. They feel good. They feel solid in the hand. You can get a good grip on them. You know, uh, for the models that don't have swappable grips, you know, they got good stippling, so you can get a good grip on them, even with gloves. Uh, the triggers are usually very uh, triggers are usually very decent right out of the box. I mean, you know, people whine about factory triggers all the time. You know, uh, 
granted, I don't know what some people expect. It's like, oh, I, I spent, you know, I spent a couple bucks on a gun. I expect a custom shop quality trigger. Blah, 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 and it's just ridiculous. But <laughs> stock guns are perfectly fine. Stop complaining, people. But anyway, uh, yeah, the triggers are great. Like I said, they're they are accurate. They are reliable right out the box. It's it's like, uh, you know, it, it's like you buy a Honda, you buy a Toyota. You know, you're probably never going to have to worry about it. Whereas, you know, your friend who buys a Chevy, you're going to have to be picking them up from the side of the road sometime. And that's the beauty parlor about Sig is they are tanks, and you can expect a very long very good service life out of it, you know, at, at whether you're buying it as a concealed carry gun or like say you're a, you know, a police officer and you want to purchase a, uh, an alternate weapon for, uh, you know, for carrying, you know, for, uh, you know, carrying the line of duty, SIGs are very popular options for that. In fact, the uh, SIG P226 down there, you know, that is a very popular, that is a very, very popular option as far as uh, duty weapons for uh, police officers and federal agents. Uh, virtually every agency you can think of as you know uh, either allowed it or issued it. The FBI used to issue these for quite a long time. Uh, in fact, SIG has boasted at various points that up to a third of the law enforcement market was actually served by them. That's a testament to how good these how good these are. Additionally, another thing. One of the uh, in addition or two of the P226, and I think a couple other. SIG guns. You'll notice the anchor right here. These were actually issued to, I believe it was the Navy SEALs. I could be wrong. Maybe it was the, you know, Bud's team, whomever. But uh, this was these were purchased and issued by the Navy to sol you know, two soldiers. So that that gives you some sort of idea of what SIG is all about. They make reliable guns that you can depend on to save your bacon if you needed to. So, uh, if you had to choose a gun for concealed carry out of here, it'd be top two, uh, plus any other SIGs that you know of, oh, what uh, would you choose? Ooh, that is tough. That is a, uh, that is actually a really good question. That's I personally chose the 938. What would you choose? Oh, me? Ooh. You know, considering oh. accuracy, you know, maybe you want to carry a little bit larger. Maybe you want to carry more comfortably. Well, uh... That's hard. Uh, ooh, that is a tough question. I choose the. Uh, personally, I would go with the. Uh, we don't ha actually have one up here, but uh, I'd get the 239. Now, uh, it, it's not up here, but uh, the 239 is a, a single stack compact. But it's uh, it's one of the older. It's one of the. It uses the older SIG operating system, so it's double single action. It's got the decocker, much like the 226. Over there, uh, carries uh, I believe carries eight, which is you know all you, which is about all you need with a carry gun. But it's uh, but it's uh, thinner and has a lot of its edges melted so that it's easier to conceal and carry. That would be my choice. Either that or uh, one of the uh, either that or one of the uh, uh, Commander Frame Sig 1911s. Those would be those would be my choice of Sig carry gun. All right, guys, if you have any questions, write them in the comments. And this is live, so uh, if you got anything you'd like to ask us, we're happy to answer. Do we have any questions, Chris? Yeah, uh, they're asking about the SIG SP2022 and the M11A1. Ooh, Ooh, good. Oh, okay. Those are, uh, those are also great choices for, uh, uh, for if you're going to conceal and carry a SIG. Those are also really great choices if you don't want, you know, either the P320 or, you know, go to one of the, uh, you know, the old SIG service pistols. So... The uh, uh, the uh, P two two five or the M eleven A one P two two five is a uh, the P two two five family is a uh, essentially a single stack compact variant of uh, the two twenty six and the earlier two twenty. So that one is chambered in nine millimeter, but since it's single stack, it carries eight plus one instead of uh, you know instead of like fifteen plus one. So if you were to compare them side by side, it would look a lot like this P226 here, except it would also be a lot thinner. So like I mentioned, this thing's about an inch and a half wide at the grips. The P225 is about a quarter of an inch narrower overall because, again, single stack magazine. It also has the, uh, you know, it has the same control layout. So you have the slide release here, you have the uh, decocking lever here. Uh, essentially, it's a 
well, basically it's a gussied up model, model 39, but hey, whatever. Uh, that is an excellent choice of carry gun. Those were uh, issued to uh, not only German police officers, but I believe there were a couple of units of uh, our military. It, it was At that point, it became the uh, uh, M11A1 instead of being the P225. Another great choice of service pistol. Uh, the 239 that I mentioned, the P239, is a basically is basically that gun with a bunch of edges rounded on it, so it's easier for concealed carry. So that's the reason. So I'll give you an idea. As far as the SP 2022, the SP 2022 has the same double action system of the uh, P 226, but it also has a polymer frame, much like the P 320 and uh, and P 250. Those are a more, we'll say, budget friendly class of service pistol. They're also a little bit more compact. Uh, this P226 barrel length is about four and a half inches. On the SP2022, it's about four inches. So it's a little bit more compact and it's a little bit lighter. You know, it's less than 30 ounces, so it is a bit easier to carry. It carries 15 plus one rounds of nine millimeter or like 13 of uh, 40 or 357 SIG when it was uh, offered in it. That is a great choice of, uh, that is a great choice of carry pistol. It, you know, it is a bit big. You know, uh, you know, it's just as just as fat as a lot of the SIG service guns, but it is just like you know, just like the other ones, completely reliable. That actually is the, if I remember correctly, that is actually the standard issue duty gun of all police in France, and they found a uh, they've actually found service lives in excess of a quarter of a million rounds out of those pistols. So the SP twenty twenty two. Man, it is a tank. It's got the uh, classic SIG double single action operating system, and you can pick them up for you know six hundred dollars. MSRP is about six hundred. Most of the time, you'll find them about five, maybe a little bit less in some stores. But that is a uh, man. That is an absolute tank of a gun. A bit on the you know, a bit on the big side for you know for a, a daily carry gun for sure, but just a solid choice. So if you guys want to get uh, into the shapeshift modular holster system and be able to carry with our new 4.0 holster. These two guns right here fit it, the 4.0 holster really well, holster, and uh, got a little fly down here. Check that out. That's new. And um, you, can, uh, you can carry these with the 4.0. We've got an ankle holster that these will all go in and uh, all sorts of different types of holsters that are all modular where you can get one system that can carry it in a number of ways, even on uh, new ways that we're coming up with, like on a backpack or um, uh, on Molly and uh, or in a car, all sorts of, of ways where you could just shift from your holster to whatever uh, situation that you're in, and it's pretty convenient. I have any other questions? Um, I have one. How many six hour models uh, do you guys offer for the 4.0? I think we're up to, uh, I think we're up to three at this point. We have the 238, the 938, and uh, the P320 Compact. Now, uh, this one's the subcompact, that, so it be roughly will look exactly like this, because it's basically the same darn gun, just with, a, just with a different firing system. So I think we're up to three. We're working on it, though. We will have more out. Uh, have a look at our website. You'll be able to find a shapeshift release calendar. Shameless plug. And it will have all the upcoming guns on there. So uh, if, uh, yeah, so we got the 938, we got the 238, and if the P320 isn't already out, I know it's coming out very, very soon. I believe it's out already, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, but we are working on more. So more will be coming. Any other questions? Um, last one is, is it true that six shoot more consistent than any other? You know, I have a relative um, who only buys SIGs, and, um, and then his sons uh, bought SIGs also. And I asked him why, and he said, you know, he, shot, he went to a range, shot a bunch of guns, and he had a very similar pattern. Then he shot a SIG, and his pattern tightened up substantially, and um, he thought it was just because the SIG was so accurate. He didn't. He doesn't know exactly why. Maybe he got better, but um, sometimes it's like a car—you get into one, 
and uh, just kind of what you stick with. Um, yeah. Is it accurate? These things are, uh, the build quality on them are, you know, among the, the best guns out there. So, you know, are these accurate? I would say, like, it's going to be hard to find a more accurate firearm, would you say? Well, I, all things considered, they're way up there. I, I, granted, what you know, the experience some people have is going to be different. So, uh, you know, those guys, you know, you're, uh, that's your, uh, your uncle and your cousin. That's my, actually my dad. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> you know, they're going to find that SIGs fit them perfectly. I might find that I can, you know, I can, I might find that I can barely get minute of dinner plate with a SIG, but then something else like, say, a 1911 or a CZ, I can, you know, I can shoot clover leaves all day. So, uh, is it more consistent? Well, you know, it might be, it might not be. It depends on whether or not it's going to be consistent for you. You know, a lot of, you know, there are a lot of things that go into that. You know, it, it may fit your hand perfectly. It might not. I mean, I haven't been to, a, I haven't been to the range with a SIG for a while. Maybe I should fix that. And uh, so I can't, I can't say that, uh, you know, for me they've been any more or any less consistent than almost anything else. But your mileage is going to vary. In a general sense, like most likely, if you go and buy one, yeah, it's going to be great. Like they've been making great guns for a really long time. They've made a, uh, a SIG has carved out a, quite the reputation for themselves when it comes to handguns. So, you know, is it is it going to instantly turn you into you know into a sharpshooter? Well, I don't know that. That's going to be up to you. Uh, you might you might get one and find you don't like the feel of it and have to get rid of it and get something else. But if you're just going to, you know, buy a particular brand off the rack, man, I, I, I don't think you can, I, yeah, I really don't think you can do a whole lot better. Then this is a German gun, too. Yeah, German precision, the most precise kind. Almost yeah. as precise as American. Actually, that's the thing. Uh, they're, they are actually, uh, in fact, I don't think any of these up here are actually German, because the thing is, SIG opened up a plant in Exeter, New Hampshire. So your garden variety SIG that you find at a gun store wasn't made in Germany. And the company's there. Uh, and actually, the thing, uh, thing about SIG Sauer, they're not actually German. They're Swiss. They just happen to have a, uh, they just happen to buy a German company and merged with it way back in the day due to German export laws. Uh, so that's actually the Sauer. SIG, in and of itself, uh, I forget the actual uh, the actual uh, words in German but it's something like uh, basically it means a Swiss gun company yeah but uh, that said they bought out JP Sauer und uh, you know the Sauer and uh, merged due to uh, import export laws so that they could actually export guns around the world and so that's how they became six Sauer. anyhow uh, they are nominally you know, German Swiss, but most of them that you're going to find here in the States are actually made at their plant in Exeter. So they're actually American. Yep. Sort of like how uh, more Toyotas are actually made here domestically than, uh, than Chevrolets. Good info. Any other questions? Nope, that's it. All right, thanks guys for watching, and uh, we'll catch you again next week.